Hello, let's make a graph. We're gonna go over how to format graphs in Logger Pro. We're gonna put on error bars, put on min max lines, all that fun stuff. All right, so I've been having some fun in Excel. Did an exciting experiment with a cart on a track, and now I wanna graph the data. So here's the data I wanna graph. I'm just gonna start by putting in Logger Pro. I made sure in Excel that I have my X stuff first and my Y stuff second. Uh, and so I can paste it right into Logger Pro that way. I'm gonna control C, control V. There we go. All right, so I can see my data points plotted. I'm going to hit the magic A button up here for auto scale. And it kind of zooms to my data. You know, I can't quite see this top one now, so I kind of usually like to zoom out one. Uh, and now I feel like I can see pretty good what's going on with my data. Um, okay. I want to start labeling something. So let's label what these are. Uh, to do this, uh, to add your axes labels, I am going to go to column options. Two ways to do that. I can go over here and double click. So if I double click on like the top of the X column, it'll open them up. Or if I right click, I can go to column options and choose X or Y. So I'll pick X. Okay, so under column definition is where you're going to get your labels. So I'm going to type in the name, which for my X was uh, pulling force. And then a short name is the variable name. This will show up in like your equation. So I want to use capital F and units would be Newtons for this. Okay, say done. And look at that. It puts it right on the axis for you, all labeled up. Amazing. Let's do the same thing for what I got on Y. I'm going to double click up here for column options and type my stuff. If you want to do, so I'm doing short name, a little A for acceleration. Uh, so I'm going to do meters per second squared. I'll do the slash. You can do negative exponents with a IB style if you like. But to do a superscript, you click this little guy, the little drop down. Um, and it gives you some options. You can also do this if you ever want to, you know, like a Greek letter for some kind of symbol. And let's go superscript two, and that'll give me a little squared. Say done. Looking good. Okay, other main label thing I want is I need a title up here. So I can do that two ways. I can double click up here at the top and I'll get to my graph options. Or you can right click anywhere on the graph and that'll pull up, you know, click graph options here. Okay, so here's a space to type the title. And that's all I need to do here. The title is always Y versus X, like thing on Y versus thing on X, how we title all graphs. So here we go. Uh, So I'm doing average acceleration versus pulling force because of what I got on Y and X. I'm going to say done. Now we're cooking. Okay. Next thing I think I want to put on is error bars. So here's how to do that. I got to go back to column options. So I'm going to go to my column options. I'm going to do pulling force first because with the data I have, those all have the same uncertainty. And so I will go to column options. I'm going to double click my force column, which is labeled up nice for me now. In the manual column options, I'm going to go to options, column options, options. So click this little tab. Um, and I want to go down here to the bottom right-ish. Click error bar calculations. I'm going to turn those on. And a fixed value is an absolute uncertainty. That's usually what I'm dealing with and what I want to be on. So uh, this is where I type my uncertainty. The error constant, plus or minus how much. I had a bunch of zeros and a five. So I think we got that. And it's now going to put error bars that big on all of my X values side to side. Now for this lab, they're really small. If I want to make sure I can zoom way in, there they are. I'll mention this when I put the graph in that the error bars in X are too small to see, but I should officially put them on there. Let's do the exciting ones though. Cause if I look at my accelerations, um, this is one where I have different uncertainties for my different values because propagation of error is fun. So Logger Pro can do this for you. Uh, what you're gonna do in Logger Pro, just like we kind of formatted in Excel, is I'm gonna make another column for my uncertainties. So in Logger Pro, the way you do this is you go up to the data menu. So I'm gonna go up to data and click new manual column. That's data, new manual column. Okay. 
this is really just for you, so you can name it whatever you want to keep track. I'll just call it like uh, acceleration uncertainty. And say done. Okay, so it makes a new column. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit just so I like to see what I'm doing. Nudge this over here. And I'll move my graph so I can room. Okay, so I go here. I'm going to copy these numbers in. Copy, paste. And now what we want to do is we can tell Logger Pro for this column here, look at this column for the size of the error bars. I'm going to go into my column options for this column for A, because that's what I want to put the error bars on. So I'm going to go back to column options, double click it. In column options, I'm under options here and error bar calculations. But now I choose use column and I choose the column where I put my uncertainty. And bam, look at that. Beautiful. It puts these different sized error bars on. Now we're looking good. All right, we're getting close. Now I think I need to put some uh, trend lines on here. I'm thinking this data looks pretty linear. So I'm going to stick a linear trend line on here. There's this button right here for linear fit. I'll drop that on. All right. And then because I have a linear fit, I want to do always min max lines because I have a slope. The slope is probably fun and exciting and important. And I need an uncertainty for that number. That's what we do these min max lines for. So the way you do this, this is the annoying part. Uh, I'm going to go up here to curve fit. So this guy up here is curve fit. Click on curve fit. So I want to do a linear fit and make it manual, but I got to do something first. So linear, I make sure I'm on the linear option, nothing else. And then I go down here and hit try fit. That will like put the best fit line on it, the same one we just put on there. But then you switch it to manual up here. All right, so that's choose linear, then press try fit, then switch it to manual. That'll make it kind of the easiest to work with. And then we say, okay, this text box means uh, I got a new line on there. Um, and let's start messing around with this one. I'm going to double click this text box to get me to the options where I can drag it around. So double click the text box, your manual fit, and it opens up. You want to click this bottom box, enable line drag. That's going to let me click and drag to make like min max lines. And I also want these because there's going to be three lines. Let's make them different colors. So pick your favorite color, go to appearance, pick what, you know, speaks to you. Um, how about, how about cornflower? Yes, cornflower. Say okay. Okay. All right. Um, now I'm going to do the maximum slope line. So I'm going to click and drag these little diamond things that pop up. I'm trying to make the steepest line I can that goes through all my error bars. Um, you kind of play around a little bit. I'm trying to start by hitting the bottom of this first one and the top of the second one. Um, these brackets are annoying, so we do want to get rid of these brackets by the end, and maybe now is a good time to do them. These show up for each fit line, so I'm going to click. you got to be right on top of it, but I'm going to click and drag it out of the way over here, and there's another one for my main fit line. So I'm moving these out of the way, so now I can see this first error bar clearly, and judge my kind of fit. Okay, so I can kind of start like this, but now I'm missing this one. I do want to consider all of my error bars is how the IB says it. So I'm going to dial this back until I'm going through this guy here. You know, you're not always necessarily going to be able to hit every single error bar perfectly in your, depending on your data, which is okay. You just want to show you're considering them. So sometimes you try and split the difference. If you're like above one a little bit and below one a little bit, just try and make it as even as you can. This looks pretty good to me. I think this is about the steepest line I can make that does go through all my data. Uh, I like where it is, so I want to keep it there. So I'm going to double click this and turn off line drag so I don't mess it up. Okay, nice. We're going to do it one more time for a minimum line. Uh, I'll do this one kind of quick. Here we go. Curve fit, linear fit, drive fit, manual. Okay. Double click my text box. Turn on line drag. Change appearance. Pick a color. Um, Hunter green sounds great. Say okay, say okay. All right, now I got my other line, and I'm trying to do a minimum slope. Well, let's see what I can make happen. I'm going to get this bracket guy out of the way, and something like this. I'm trying to start at the top of this one, 
and go to the bottom of the last one because that's going to generally give me the you know least steep. But then I'm looking at the ones in the middle. Got to kind of hit that fourth one. So just dialing it in. Almost. That looks pretty good. All right. I think this works. That looks like a pretty good min-max line. So I'm going to turn off line drag on this guy. And... I'm going to turn off line drag on this guy. Come on. All right, now my lines are locked in place where I want them. Everything's looking pretty beautiful. Last couple clean up things. Um, make sure all of these brackets are out of the way. We don't th want them on top of any of our data points, so they'll usually be on your first and last, so let's get these out of the way. Got to be right on it. Click, drag, click, drag. There's going to be three of them, one for each line. There they go. All right, now I can see these all clearly. Okay, um, we're pretty much there. The uh, thing I want to do now, though, because I'm going to put this in a document, so... I'm going to copy paste it, always copy paste it, but um, notice this. So let me paste it in as is right now. This is not great uh, because just, you know, look at it on the page. It's pretty small. It's pretty hard to read. This is super goofy, but this is what the Logger Pro people say to do. So we're going to do it. What you do is you shrink your graph. You shrink it way down. Um, and the goal is going to be shrink it as much as we can while still seeing everything. All our text boxes. So I probably need a little bigger. The other thing I'll do while I'm at it is I want to adjust my zoom. Maybe I'll do this first. Uh, I want to zoom in just a little bit. If I auto scale, that's pretty good, but um, I can't like see the origin for this data. So mess around with it. I like to auto scale and then kind of zoom out one. Um, and then you can highlight a box if you really want to get specific with it. So this depends on your data, but uh, I want to see the origin. So I'm going to start like down here. I'm going to click and drag and whatever box you highlight here it'll zoom if i press the zoom in button after this it'll zoom to what i want so i'm starting just past the origin like down here and i'm going to go up kind of past my last data point so i have enough space to see it something like that looks good to me and i'll click the zoom in button and it zooms in exactly to what i want so i see the origin i see all my data it's nice and big and again now the trick is you shrink this graph down like as much as you can get away with. I need to be able to fit my X boxes and to make sure they don't cover up any of my lines is the main thing. So you gotta just kind of play around with it. This is pretty good. Okay, so let's look at why we're doing this. Now that I did it this way, I shrunk it way down. If I copy paste it in, all right, and do copy paste it. Do not screenshot. If you screenshot a graph, it's like you're basically, it's the same thing as like uh, taking a picture of your laptop screen with a cell phone, you know, like uh, let's get the good resolution, huh? So you click on the thing anywhere. Once you're in it, you just copy paste, you know, control C or right click and copy. And then you got a beautiful high res picture of your graph. Go to your Word doc, paste it in. Look at this. Look at how much better that is than this. Oh my gosh, beautiful. Yeah, you can super see it on the report. Uh, you can see all the error bars. So you make it look nice. Yeah, you make it look nice and stick it in. Um, all right, and you can play with it. There's lots of other formatting things you can do. Um, none of this stuff is required. One thing I like to do sometimes, if we go to graph options, you can put on the minor grid lines. Uh, that maybe looks good. Let's try this. We can copy paste this in. Uh, other little stuff you can do once you put it in Word, you can go to picture format, put a little border around it, you know, have some fun. Just make it clean looking, make it readable. Um, make sure you can see all our data points, see all our error bars, see the equations of the trend lines, and see the min-max lines. Clearly, that's really the important stuff that it's all about. All right, so there we go. We made a nice little graph in Logger Pro. That's how you do it. Have fun.